Welcome to another InnoRail Play It Forward video. I'm Glenn Schwartzberg, and today I'll be talking about Oracle Analytics Cloud and the S-Base patch enhancements that have occurred between August and December of 2017. So first let's talk about the S-Base Command Line Interface, or SCLI, and what enhancements it's had brought to it. First, in August, they created a whole bunch of MaxL sample scripts that you can use because they enabled MaxL to run on SCLI, and you can store passwords for the CLI sessions. So you no longer do you have clear text for your user ID and your password. They are now stored in a wallet encrypted, so it is a much safer thing and SOX compliant. In September, they added a whole bunch of command line interface commands, including script, list filter, list locks, start, stop, and run MaxL. In addition, they created a new streaming data and metadata load. What streaming does is it allows you to create a SQL statement where the CLI is being run against a relational database, and it will pull the data out of the relational database and push it up into SBase using a load rule. In December, they created a stored connection for that streaming data load, just like they did for SCLI. So now that's stored in a wallet, so it is encrypted and safe. In addition, they added compression options for both file uploads and downloads to speed up the uh, processing of files that you can now do it in a compressed format. What about cube designer enhancements? Well, in August, they made a whole bunch of enhancements, including the ability to set different load rule parameters. So for example, things like the number of header rows or the delimiter or um, reject and select criteria, those kind of things can now be done through cube designer. Administrators can delete applications and cubes. In the hierarchy viewer, you can now search for members. You can now add generation names in through the cube designer. Our run to build cubes can now be run asynchronously. That is in the background. So you're not locking up your Excel session when you're loading data. They've also added in text-based measures, text and date measures actually. And it gives you the ability to export data and calc scripts when you're exporting cubes into the application workbook. On the data, if the data is below, I believe it's about 200 meg, it will put it into the workbook. Otherwise, it will create it as a separate file. Well, in September, they changed it a little bit. So those large files that you're exporting, if they're really large, you have the option just to save them on the server itself and not download them to speed up your process. In addition, you can create measures dimensions using calculated member formulas in header rows. So this is for unstructured data loads. And say that you have um, a unit and a price column and you wanted to have a calculated total price column, then you could have a formula that you put into the header row that basically says it's units times price. It will put that formula in there and create that member for you. In December, they added the ability to validate formulas in the formula editor, so we're sure that the formulas that we're loading are good. In addition, the Cube Designer Hierarchy Viewer can now display duplicate members in more than one dimension at once, so if you're trying to find duplicate member issues, you can see where they are. What about calculation and configuration enhancements? Well, in August, they added in nested MDX statements and that supports both ASO and BSO cubes. So basically, you can have a subselect or a select within a select on a cube to be able to get better performance. They've also added a new MDX insert clause. It allows you to populate a cube with new data that wasn't in the cube already. They added the ability to trace calculations in SmartView itself. So this is a configuration file setting that you would change called trace. And what it allows you to do is basically look at a calculation before and after it is being run. So 
for a particular intersection, you can see what the data values were before the calculation ran and then what the result is after it was run. So if you're trying to find out why a calculation isn't working, this is a great way to do it because you can actually put what I'll call a breakpoint in and look at what the data value is before and after. They've changed location aliases to improve to make them more efficient, especially when the connections are onto the same server. In the UI, they've added a wizard for both transparent and replicated partitions, and they've changed it so you can set the solve order in Smart View while you're looking at your calculations, and will actually give you hints on how the solve order should be set. In September, they added a new weighted sum function that allows you to basically do the calculation on each member and then sum it up based on that weighted average for each member. In December, they improved the hybrid mode to work more efficiently with some intersections having pound missing. That calc tracing I was talking about earlier was improved if your if statements are really complex. It was having problems before giving you the actual data values. They enhanced and improved it so it works better. They enhance both partitioning and XREF and XWrite for single instance deployment. So if you're not going across servers. If it's on the same instance, then you no longer have to have login credentials. It will pick up the credentials of the person who is logged on and use their security. What about some other enhancements? I should mention that everything but the audit trail, you have to be on the Enterprise Edition of OAC S-Space for you to get these to work. Otherwise, for the standard, they're not there. So in August, they added an initial drill through to a relational database. It wasn't very good at this point, but it was the first attempt. It wasn't great because it used generation names in order to figure out what it was allowed to drill through on. In August, they also added the audit trail data for viewing. You can actually view it through Smart View. In September, they improved the drill through so it now has better SQL statements and better ways of determining what you're allowed to drill through on. And then in December, they enhanced the scenario management. And in that, you can now revert values back to the base members when you, you had a different scenario and you had made changes to it. You can now update it and reset them back to what the base members were. You can also basically wipe out a scenario by setting everything back to pound missing. So that's it for the changes. There are more and more coming. They're quickly making enhancements to the OAC S-Base instance. So keep your ear posted to this channel for upcoming videos on what the newest enhancements are. Have a great day.